cell stoichiometry provides us a way of predicting the masses or concentrations of substances produced while a cell operates, whether voltaic or electrolytic. This is done by using half reactions that express what is going on in the half cell at a particular time. This whole process was started when Michael Faraday, a notable physicist and chemist, spent some time trying to find out the elementary charge. He wanted to figure out the charge of an electron and deduced that he could do so by having a look at a cell that would operate for a certain amount of time and knowing that a certain uh, substance like silver, which has a one-to-one -one ratio of electrons passing through the circuit and silver metal deposited at the cathode, would be very useful in order to accomplish this. So what he did is he operated a silver electroplating cell for a certain amount of time, and knowing what he did about physics, he was able to uh, relate the time that the cell operated and the current used to the mass of silver that was plated and created a ratio. What he discovered out of the whole process is the following relationship. Every one mole of electrons carries 9.65 times 10 to the fourth coulombs of charge. Turns out that if you reduce this using the actual Avogadro's number, then you get the fundamental unit of charge. So what is new to chemists learning this course would be some of these physics concepts like, for example, current uh, and how it applies here. So if we have a look at our cell, and again, it doesn't matter which one it is, so for ease, we'll just use one that we've looked at recently. So in a zinc copper cell or galvanic cell, of course, electrons are going to leave the zinc electrode, travel through the external wire, and arrive at the copper electrode. And that's really the main thing that we need to focus on. Now, truthfully, what would be helpful in this point is not a voltmeter, because we're not interested in potential for this calculation, but rather we could replace that with an ammeter. And so the symbol A tells us that we're actually going to be measuring current. The ammeter then would basically do a tally of the flow of electrons through that part of the circuit over time and return that information as current. So current often will be represented in the units of amperes. However, because of our focus on cancelling units when we do a calculation, it's good to know that this information, ampere, can also be represented as coulombs per second. In other words, how much charge is flowing through there for every second that the cell operates. So using those two units interchangeably is very important. Time measurements will also be important to cancel this portion of our ratio. And often the time is not measured in seconds. We potentially could operate a cell that quickly, but we probably wouldn't get measurable mass changes at either electrode in that time, time span. So knowing how to convert uh, minutes or hours into seconds is a reasonable expectation. And I'll include some ratios about that in an upcoming example. Some of the simplest things that we might have to do here then are to look at a cell, figure out how long it operates and the current that it operates under, and just state your understanding of the moles of electrons that would be created. So perhaps just off the cuff here, if we operated this cell at half an amp, for, let's say, two minutes. And we would like to try to figure out the amount of electrons passing through. Then we are in a good position to figure that out using the Faraday constant. In this case, we'd start with the given information with the singular unit. 
recognize that the amps are really coulombs per second, so we have a mismatch in our units right now. I would first want to convert the minutes into seconds. Then use the current in order to cancel out the unit of time. And lastly, use the Faraday constant to cancel out the charge. So solving this problem, we would get this rather small amount of electrons flowing through. But as we're going to see, even small amounts of electrons can result in measurable mass changes because of the calculation for molar mass. So having a look at a copper electroplating cell, we're going to ask the following question. Determine the mass of copper deposited from copper to sulfate as the cell operates at four and a half amps for 25 minutes. So the setup here is going to be rather similar. However, we do need one additional bit of information because while the current and the time do inform us about the moles of electrons as demonstrated earlier, the relationship between the moles of electrons and the moles of copper is not understood unless we have a look at the chemical reaction. Now, it's a half reaction that will tell us about that. So what we would want to do is construct a half reaction or look up a half reaction, which is much more common. If you go to your table, you'll actually see that there is a known half reaction that converts copper to ions into copper metal. And it would look like this. So that being said, we can use that information to produce a mole ratio between the balance of copper and electrons in order to answer this question. We will additionally need the molar mass of copper, which we can reference from our data booklet, in order to solve the problem. The solution would look something like this. So this cell will deposit 2.2 grams of copper and due to the operation of the cell and that half reaction being reduction, that would occur at the cathode as indicated in the diagram. 